Hello and welcome to the first blog off the range video for quite a while and I'm sorry for the couple of hundred of you that uh, follow the off the range channel but I've been kind of busy unfortunately. So anyway one thing that I have been busy with is getting back into new hobbies that I'd given up years ago and got inspired by certain people, Kevin, uh, to do. So I got myself a couple of nice new guitars and uh, was looking into the mechanics of it and ran across the uh, Reloved Guitars YouTube channel by Sam Deeks, who uh, seems to be an excellent chap and explains really well the mechanics of what's going on in guitars and how to set them up properly. Now, I thought I wasn't going to try any of the more drastic stuff there with any of my nicer guitars, so what I've gone and done is bought the most budget Squire Strat on the planet that still has a tremolo and a humbucker in the rear. This is Indonesian made and it cost in Switzerland all of 123 francs, that's under 100 pounds and I'm amazed that they can make a guitar for that kind of money and sell it in Switzerland and make a profit. It's really quite impressive. That's not to say that it's a particularly great guitar. That's part of the point though. Uh, what Sam does a lot of is turn some extremely budget guitars into some really nicely playable instruments, okay, the the the, um, the wood's not as expensive and what have you, but uh, he's really good at setting them up and uh, one of these days I might even treat myself to one of his uh, custom creations. But for the minute, this is basically my beta guitar, I have a beta K31, this is my beta guitar for practicing setup. Now uh, I got kind of fascinated by Sam's videos and ended up sort of looking more at the mechanics of what goes on in a guitar to really understand the whys and wherefores of it. Now, most guitars out of the factory are set up pretty badly. Uh, it's a question of cost, it's a question of the labour time that goes into setting one up well. You look at the, some of Sam, Sam, Sam posts a lot of unedited videos that can be hours and hours long and it'll take you through the entire setup from A to Z of a guitar. And you just can't put that kind of um, that kind of time into a guitar and then sell it for, 100, for under 100 pounds in Switzerland. It's really quite impressive. So we want to view everything kind of through a prism of the, of the fact that this is an extremely cheap guitar. Saying that, it's not bad. Uh, my first electric guitar was in fact a uh, Korean Squire Strat that we got second hand in about 1994 for ooh, about 120 pounds. So uh, it's amazing, things have moved on. This particular one is a Squire Bullet Strat. The cheapest ones are a hardtail, no tremolo, and uh, three single coils. I deliberately wanted this because as a project, I would quite like to set it up, if I can get the action nicely, to be a bit like a sort of uh, early Porcupine Tree Stephen Wilson guitar with a piezoelectric bridge pickup some quite convincing acoustic sounds all in one guitar. Um, maybe we'll get onto that slight. Problem is that a Fishman Pietro uh, bridge costs about twice as much as this entire guitar does. So we shall see. The first thing will be setup. Now uh, I'll just quickly go over what's all right and what's not all right about this so far. Tuning wise, it's not too bad. The machine heads are kind of cheap and nasty, they're kind of sloppy, there's a lot of backlash on them, they're probably going to be replaced at some point. The the woodwork on the neck, it's, it's pretty, it, it's, 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 it's pretty good, it's, it's for the money, it's, uh, it's not warped in any way, it's, uh, it's flat. The setup out the box wasn't too bad. Um, now, the pickups are this is the humbucker, clean. Not bad. <laughs> kind of noisy. Typical for a for a cheap guitar. It's a bit noisy. There's a bit of yes. Yeah, up parasitic noises. Shouldn't be doing that. 
Okay. Cheap pickups, what do you, I mean, what, what do you expect for the money? Uh, the tram... Wee, let's just turn that off drive. The tram's not bad, it's not set up floating. I don't like it floating anyway. It's not entirely held it, so... I mean, there, there, there's, there's a lot of experimentation to do. I think, I think that by the end of this process it's going to be a bit like Trigger's Broom. Um, everything's going to have been, practically everything's going to have been replaced on it. We're probably going to end up ultimately with just the, the pit guard, the body and the neck being the same, everything, everything else off. But the point is to practice on a guitar that if I junk it, it doesn't matter, it's not expensive. Interestingly, that's gone sharp. And then you can just see... Look at that, look at that play, that is nasty. We'll get some nice tuners on this, that'll make an awful lot of difference. So, let me just, uh, excuse me a minute while I just get this back into tune. Yeah, so those tuners are nasty and uh, this really is the handle of death on this. Now, uh, we can fix that up to a certain degree with a bit of graphite up here but to reduce friction and so on, but uh, that's pretty nasty. So they're going to go. The bridge, if I put a Fishman um, piezo in, it's definitely going to go. If not, we might just live with it. Um, now, the interesting stuff. Basically, with a normal sort of factory setup, you're going to have a few issues going on there. You might have string buzz unless they set it really high. This one's not too bad. Um, you are probably going to go sharp at the first fret, and you're probably not well intonated at the twelfth fret, because you, you want the twelfth fret to be the middle of the string, and sort of, not necessarily the physical middle, but the, but the, the middle of its vibration point, so that you get an exact octave, you double the frequency exactly on it. By rights, that should be the exact midpoint, but because of end effects, it isn't always quite, which is why you often see bridges kind of staggered, and this one's pretty straight. This is intonated well enough for a beginner. Um, so if we just find a string that is on, so we've got... So we are bang on there, green. Well, we were bang on till I turned it over. Let's try and turn it that way. Bang on, and then we're sharp, just, and that's, I can't, I can't see it, but uh, you can, uh, turn on the side, these strings not too bad, G string, Oh yeah, G string is going way high. Hold my T and watch this. So that's going high. Um, so one of the first things to do in setup, you can do it at whatever stage you feel comfortable, is get these set. Basically, if it's running high at the twelfth fret your string is too short and this is too near that end. So you bring the bridge back, the saddle back for that string, get it so that it's bang on. And you can even see it with this El Cheapo um, tuner here. I've got a much better one in an effects pedal, which I'll use when it comes to that. The next, the next thing is that... Oh, that's way high. Right. At the first fret, we're normally way high. Watch this. See, it's already drifted, but that, that G sharp is way over. So D almost on, way high, which is normal. Bang on A, and then way high. What's causing that is the fact that the string height at the nut here is too high. This is a standard factory setup. Most guitars out of the box will have this issue. Um, 
what's happening is that when you press at the first fret, you're actually having to press the string down quite, quite hard and quite far, and uh, it causes it to, it causes the tension in the string to increase, which puts the uh, puts the note up further than it should go. Major problem if you're into playing songs like I like to play where we use this chord and uh, if you can tell me what chord that is and who uses it obsessively we can be friends mm. basically that chord if you're going sharp which you are there it sounds like absolute arse That's the tension in there. It's got a lot of flicks in that neck, actually. I'm not putting a lot of force into that. Hmm. So the next thing we got is the next thing we got is overall action height. And if you look at that, this isn't too bad on the overall height. It can come down a bit. And there's two ways we can act on that. The first one is here, which we want to reduce that anyway, and a, and a, and a, a good basis is 0.3 millimeters over the first fret, uh, which you can do with the feeler gauge. Um, that's a good first basis, and here, the last fret, given this is an El Cheapo, we might be able to get it down to, well, I'd aim for 1.5, 1.6 maybe, I'd probably settle for 1.8 if it wasn't too bad. Oh, um, people can get them down even lower, but I uh, don't think I'm going to go that far. Um, now any adjustment up here is going to have a big effect there, but we're only going to be doing fractions of a millimetre anyway, and it's going to have a tiny effect down here. Any adjustment at the saddle, and you see they've got screws there that you can wind them up and down, that has a big effect there, and not very much effect there. So what we're probably going to do is um, neck relief, which I'll get onto in a minute, then that, then that, and then we will see how low we can get it without buzzing. Now, neck relief, the neck isn't flat and shouldn't be flat. You've got the strings pulling here, you've got the strength in the wood, and in that slot there, which is filled, you've got what's called a truss rod, which is um, a metal girder, basically, and you can adjust the tension there. And you've got a balance between the force applied by the wood, the force applied by the strings, and the force applied by the truss rod, which give the neck a curvature, and it should curve up a little bit. Some people set them up absolutely flat, which means that you have to have more height here, but you can do far better the compromise, because if it's got more curvature, that comes up more, you've got that has very little effect up there, but has more effect up here. And the reason is that when a string vibrates, it's like a skipping rope, basically, that uh, in the middle, it'll start to vibrate and go round and round and round. Um, you're giving it some clearance to do that without having to just jack that up manically. Um, so, um, this one, to be honest, it, out the out the box, the, the, the truss rod was loose. And the only thing I've done to it so far is I've just tightened it a bit. And you can uh, press the string down gently like that at the last fret. And then vibrate it, see if it vibrates cleanly, see if it buzzes. That's not bad. Um, various figures for this are sort of a 64th of an inch halfway down. Seems to be a reasonable, uh, reasonable clearance. Part of it's taste. If you like it flat or like it loose, but you'll get uh, you get more leeway if there's more of it, but you don't want too much of it because that raises the whole action. So that's not too bad. Now, what actually causes buzzing is the string hitting a fret. Um, if the frets aren't level, it's more likely to hit, and in a really bad case, it can choke. Uh, what choking is, is if you, you, you press one note and then say, say that fret or that fret is significantly higher than that one, pressing down there will actually hold the string up there and play, play a different note to the one you're trying to play. 
we will see what this is when we get the action down but uh, what we can also do is what's called fret leveling now it used to be thought that you had to take the neck off and make sure it was absolutely level and then file them flat uh, what Sam has been big in promoting is use of what he calls the banana which is basically a truss rod and you stick um, sandpaper on it and then you can actually level it in situ by turning by turning this nut here we can actually influence the curvature of it we can match the curvature to the neck and then we can sand the flat we, we, we can sand the frets down with the strings in situ with the correct tension on the neck and it's far more accurate uh, Sam's popularized that a lot and it seems to work very well so we shall if we need to do it we shall we shall try it on this um, another thing you can do just to see how what influence just simply lowering the action up this end will do is put a capo on the frets and see if it buzzes not bad This has promise, this might not need levelling. If we do level it, we will need to uh, reprofile the, uh, the frets so that they are the correct profile. And in any case, we're gonna have to polish them because something that they've got really, really drastically wrong on this guitar. And if I turn the gain up. These frets are rough. So any, any bending, any bending at all. And they are scratchy, 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 nasty scratchy. For a beginner, it's fine. Um, you're not gonna be doing much much bending anyway, and they'll wear in. They will wear in. The, uh, you, you Basically, the string is gonna burnish the frets over time. So it's not the end of the world, but that is, for me, utterly unsatisfactory. So, at the very, very least, we're going to uh, we're going to be polishing these. At the worst, we'll be leveling them, recrowning them, and then polishing them. But uh, we'll take this one step at a time. We'll take it video by video and uh, see how the setup with this goes. Now, I've done fiddling with the bridge before. I've done fiddling with the nut before. I have not fret leveled before. So if we end up fret leveling, you'll be learning along with me, poor you. So uh, there we go. If any of that is at least vaguely interesting to anyone, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And follow along with my attempting to make a satin purse, I won't say silk purse, a satin purse out of a surprisingly good sow's ear for the money. So stay tuned for that. Bye.